In this lecture, I am going to review how to interpret a weak acid strong base titration. And what we're going to do is verify the initial pH, the max buffering position, the equivalence point, the final pH, and some point between the max buffering position will verify and do all the calculations so that we can understand how we could actually get every single point calculated and how these points make sense on a titration curve. Well, first of all, first of all, let's deal with the titration itself. This is the data from a weak acid strong base titration. So let's write this down here. So what I have here is I titrated um, sodium hydroxide and 0 0.05 molar sodium hydroxide and I added this uh, to a beaker that had 25 milliliters of acetic acid. Now acetic acid is HC2H3O2. All right, so strong base, weak acid. And as I've told you before, this titration, like all titrations, are stoichiometric um, qualities. They have stoichiometric qualities because this strong base will yank the H away stoichiometrically. Okay, So it's important that we're going to have that part. So we're going to have stoichiometry involved in our titrations. We're also going to have equilibrium pop up. Uh, unlike our first titration, which was a strong acid, strong base, we're going to have some equilibrium type um, solutions to some of these points that we're going to verify and understand in this curve because we're going to have the ability of the conjugate base to go backwards. And let me explain. When we dealt with hydrochloric acid, which we do not have in this lab, that was the conjugate acid. And what it produced is the proton of the H3O plus, and it produced the chloride ion. This chloride ion has no ability to reform the acid. This is a one way reaction. This is a uh, basically a reaction that goes to completion depending upon um, the limiting reagent. It goes forward because it drives forward because the Ka of this acid is so large there's very little recombination if any. So chlorine has a terrible or has a terrible ability as a conjugate base to act as a conjugate base. It cannot accept the proton and reform the acid. So this reaction goes one way. Therefore because we don't have any backwards capability of the conjugate base, what I mean by that, the conjugate base could not ionize water, it couldn't rip an H away from water, then all we were left with in terms of the acid's conjugate base was a spectator that did nothing in solution. Likewise, sodium hydroxide, NaOH, broke apart into Na+. Now, Na+, okay, doesn't ionize water at all. So it does not make um, any bases or, or hydroxides happen from water. So it also spectates when it, when it dissociates into the hydroxide ion. Therefore, there's no recombination of this. So therefore, of course, because this is soluble. So the conjugate base and acid produced, so to speak, from the acid and base we had, had no ability to react with water. There was no backwards capability. It was driven forward. So there was no equilibrium. Today, or in this titration, you have a weak acid. And let's write it again. We have HC2H3O2. That's acetic acid. Okay, that's vinegar. And what it's going to do is, of course, it's going to dissociate into the proton. And it's going to dissociate into its conjugate base, C2H3O2. Negative. Now, this... A weak acid, as we talked about, something with a Ka that is low, its Kb is higher, which means its ability to reform the acid, except the proton and reform the acid, okay, is very, very, uh, very real and it does happen and it affects the pH of the solution significantly. Or we could think that the conjugate base is able to do what? The conjugate base of the acid, which is C2H3O2 negative, 
can ionize water. Its conjugate base is strong enough to yank an H away from the water and reform or produce a hydroxide. Okay, so there are some things going on with a weak acid, weak base scenario that did not happen with our strong acid, strong base. First and foremost, let's look at our curve. The curve that we had previously, when we did a strong acid, strong base, you notice the initial pH was lower. And we didn't have a steady climb. For the most of us, it was flat, and then boom, it went up. And our pH was something in the middle of these lines, which was 7. We got a pH of 7 as our equivalence point. Now, the equivalence point, as we talked about, is a point where the protons of the acid in the beaker, remember we're titrating uh, an acid with a base, the acid is in the beaker, it was 25 milliliters, and we drop the base from a burette into the beaker. So, because of that, we basically annihilate all the H plus with hydroxides. At the equivalence point, there is no more protons in the beaker that are free, or H3O pluses, they're synonymous, and of course, all the hydroxides have been reacted with the H pluses. So all you have at this point when we did this was water. And water, naturally, if there's no other things in it, has a pH of 7, because naturally water has 1 times 10 to the negative 7 concentration of the H pluses or H3O pluses. Why? Because Kw at 25 degrees Celsius is 10 to the negative 14, as we previously learned. So that's why it has to be 7. Okay, but if you notice, our equivalence point is clearly not at 7. Our equivalence point is, well, if this is 7, this is 6, this is 8. Our equivalence point is somewhere, I would say, probably in this neighborhood of 8 point something. Why is our equivalence point higher than 7? Well, we're going to get to that, and then the reason behind that is because when we drive off all the acid, we're left with 100% conjugate base, and that conjugate base produces more hydroxide. So our equivalence point is going to be above 7 because we're going to produce some extra hydroxides at that. Now, we'll talk about that, but I want you to feel that this curve is clearly different than the strong acid, strong base. Again, strong, ba strong acid starts lower, was kind of flat, and then jolted up. And the equivalence point was somewhere in between at 7. Here, with a weak base, I'm sorry, weak acid strong base scenario, okay, we don't, this climbs a little bit steadily, and then that asymptotic change here isn't as great as it was if it was strong acid. And part of that reason, or big part, or it is the reason, is because of the uh, conjugate base having ability to ionize water and create hydroxide. So let's get to it. What do I do with this? All right. So I want to verify my initial pH. Okay, well, in order to know my initial pH, I need to know the concentration of my acid, my H+. Well, I know it's 25 milliliters, but I don't know its concentration. So I can't go there yet. Well, I can look at the equivalence point, and through some rulers, we could figure out exactly you know, where that line is in between these points. You know, and measure that, okay? But you know what I'm going to go after? I'm going to go after the max buffering position. I want to find, I know that the equivalence point is somewhere in this ratio. And, you know, and I could measure it with a ruler. I can try to see, like, from this point where it turns. And from where this point, it kind of turns the same way. I could measure this distance with a ruler and cut it in half and get a value. But it's okay because this line is going almost straight up, so it's, if I'm off by a little bit, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to make the assumption that my equivalence point is somewhere near this line of 51 degrees. I'm sorry, 51 milliliters. All right, now I could be off. It might be somewhere a little higher or less, but I'm just going to say that 51 milliliters, in all intents and purposes, with this um, uh, lecture, is my 51 milliliters is my the volume that gets me to the equivalence point so I'm just gonna make this go all the way up here so it's about right here 
is the equivalence point. Clearly, it's above 7. seven. 7 is right here, and it should make sense why, but we'll calculate that. Now, graphically, I get equivalence point of 51. Maybe you're saying it's 50.5 when you look at that middle line between these, these changes here. That's okay. All right, but graphically, you should be able to figure out the equivalence point is at some point in between here. Okay. Now, where do we go from here? Well, now that I have identified the volume of what? Base added. Remember, this is the volume of base added. Once I know the volume of base added, I know that that base, however milliliters of base I've added, this must be enough, what, moles of hydroxide to neutralize all my protons in the beaker. So this is at the equivalence point. This is this tells me at this volume, I can figure out the moles. Now I don't want that yet. We'll get to that. But if 51 milliliters of my base was needed to produce this equivalence point, which by the way means what? This is the point where I now have zero percent acid and a hundred percent conjugate base, right? At this position, I have what? Something in between, right? You could say a hundred percent acid, although it, it is a weak base, but I'm looking for the position where I have 50 percent acid. Now, what's driving it forward? It's a weak acid. It's the strong base. Stoichiometrically is driving it forward. So I'm looking for the position where I have 50% acid left. Remember, I'm adding base to an acid and have 50% base left. Or this would be conjugate base. Because if I, if I make the reaction go forward, I'm going to produce conjugate base. Let me explain again. I have C2 H3O2 with an H in front with a strong base, the hydroxide. I'm going to drive the reaction. This is normally not a weak, this is normally not a good acid. It doesn't give off its H's very well, but the strong base, okay, forces its hand and pulls the what? H off. And I'm left with C2H3O2, negative one. That's the conjugate base. Of course, I made the water. So, if I half titrate, this is a remember equivalence point is full titration. You added enough what base to make all of this go forward, and you've got none of this left. But I want to find the max buffering position where it's half titrated, meaning I added just enough hydroxide to have the same amount of what conjugate base as conjugate acid. So I have titrated. So how do I do that? Well, if 51 milliliters is enough, what, base to completely neutralize it, 51 divided by 2, okay, which is going to be my 25.6, 25 25.5, sorry, milliliters at some point, would be enough, 25, I can do this, 0.5, and that would be the milliliters needed for me to titrate it halfway. This is the amount of milliliters to titrate it all the way, to neutralize all of that. So let's go 525.5, 25.5. So this is my max buffering position right here. And that is 25. Point five. Looks like I missed it. So 25.5, I was guessing, I was pretty good. 25.5 is right here. Okay, it's not liking this. And that's my max buffering position. Now, why is that significant? Why do I care? Well, I'll tell you why I care. I care because... In order to do most of these equilibrium problems that, I'm, that are going to happen here, I can get the Ka at this point. Now, understand, we, we, we figured out that the pH of the solution is equal to the pKa 
plus the log of the conjugate base. In this case, it's C2H3O2, negative 1, over the what? Conjugate acid, HC2H3O2. Now, at the max buffering position, now, why do we call it a max buffering position? Well, if you titrate it halfway and you have what? Half as much. If I started out with one mole of this and now I have 0.5 of this produce and 0.5 of this produce, I have equal amount of acid and base that can buffer a solution and maintain the pH. Remember, a buffer is that you can maintain the pH without it changing because you have both a base that can handle some acid and an acid that can handle some base. It's the max buffer position. right? I can go this way or this way without the pH changing that much. But more importantly, if these are equal numbers, whatever that is, these will cancel out and you have the log of 1. The log of 1 is 0. And beautifully or not, well, beautifully, I think, log of 0 plus what? Well, pH equals the pKa. So to get the Ka, my friends, let's go find exactly on this point what the pH is. Now to find the um, max buffer pH, which we now know to be the um, pKa, negative log of the Ka, um, you would take your graph, and I have the files posted, take your graph, and examine these points to find exactly what this pH is. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to estimate this this value. But I don't expect you to estimate. I expect you to go back to your graph and really find this point, these two points here, and see what they are. And if you had to, you take the average of the two. So I'm going to estimate. So I'm going to say that this looks like something like a seven. So I'm going to say. 4.7, and that's my estimate of what this pH would be at this max buffering position. Again, the max buffering position is that position where we have halfway titrated the acid, meaning we've halfway annihilated the acid with the base, and we have equal amounts of conjugate acid and conjugate base. That's what creates a buffer. And you know it's a nice buffer because look at this line. This line doesn't steadily go up. It, it's, it's maintaining a very similar pH. Now it's going up a little bit, but not tremendously. So it's showing the buffer capability. Okay. So in any case, you got once you go back and you go find that value, I'm going to say mine is 4.7. And once I do that, now I can do some things. So if my uh, pKa is equal to 4.7, then what I'm going to do to go into my Ka, because I need the Ka, that's what I'm asking for one of the things of this la of this activity or the lab, is find the Ka of acetic acid. So I'm going to do 10 to the negative x, or to the negative 4.7, and put that in your calculator. So when you do that, you get, I get 1.9 9, 5, okay, so 1995 Okay, times 10 to the negative 5. So we're going to keep two sig figs here. 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5. That is my Ka of the acetic acid in this lab. So I'm going to write this up here. All right. So my first thing is I got my Ka. So I got the Ka of acetic acid is equal to my 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5. No units for equilibrium constants. Okay, and that's my Ka for my acetic acid. HC2H3O2. All right. Now let's get after number 2, which uh, I don't know if I have these in the right order, but let's get after the initial pH. All right. What is the initial pH? Well, as I said before, what did we do in this lab? We dropped base, which was 0 0.05 molar 
NaOH base into a beaker that had 25 milliliters of um, unknown acid. It's a concentration of my acid, my acetic acid. So to get after what that concentration is, all right, we need to know something about the moles. All right, so again, I'm going to have to kind of stop my work on trying to find the initial concentration. I guess I was after the initial pH here. And in order to get the pH, I know the Ka, and I know it's going to be an equilibrium problem because I know this acid does not dissociate very well with this low Ka. So what I'm going to need to know is the initial concentration of my acid. So um, I need to know the molarity. Okay, now we didn't use an indicator, but we did find out through the graphic analysis that my equivalence point is about 51. So let's go back to this work now. So if I'm at 51 milliliters, I am now going to convert that into moles of H+. All right, so watch how I do this. All right, so I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to take my 51 milliliters. of my NaOH and I'm going to get rid of my milliliters to get liters and my milliliters go bye bye now I have liters and what I'm going to do with this is is um, I've got my volume and I want moles well I know the molarity of my NaOH solution is equal to 0 0.050 moles for every one liter. So I'm using the molarity to go to moles. And now I got moles of NaOH. And I know that one NaOH has one hydroxide. And um, I can write that here, but I'm just going to go quickly. I know that there is moles of hydroxide, essentially. NaOH dissociates into one hydroxide. So this is moles of hydroxide. And there's one hydroxide for every one H+. So what I just did here, by getting rid of my hydroxide, is now I have moles of protons. And what's important here is at equivalence, it's always what? At equivalence point, the H pluses equal the hydroxides. We have just annihilated all of the protons that were in this beaker. They're gone. Okay. So at the equivalence point, that is the stoichiometric point sometimes called, I can find the moles of H+. So let's go find that number. Now I get 0 0.00255, and this is moles of H+. Okay, now how does that help me? Well, in the beaker, there's 25 milliliters. So molarity is equal to moles, 0 0.00255, over liters. So convert this to liters. And that's my molarity of my solution. Let's go find that number. So divide that by 0 0.025, and I get my molarity of my acid is equal to 0 0.102. That's pretty cool because that's what I made. I made, well, I made 0.1, but you can see 0.01 will take. So I'll call this number three. So the concentration of my acid, which is something else I asked for, is equal to 0 0.102 molar, okay, which is good because I used 0.1, at least I thought it was 0.1, but now we have definitely verified that, okay, now, how do I get my initial pH, all right, so let's kind of scroll down, I'm kind of working all over the place here, my initial pH, I'm going to get rid of the henderson Hasselblad because we all know the pH equals the pKa at the max buffering position, it's something we should have figured out, so what's the initial pH, all right, let's see, well, if it was a strong acid, 
my acetic acid would completely dissociate, but it doesn't. So my HC2H3O2, all right, is going to dissociate. Let's put water there. Let's make it simple because in the beaker, without any added hydroxide, you're going to have mostly water. And the most predominant species in the beaker is water. So it's going to react with water. And it's going to make some H3O pluses, but not much. And of course, what's remaining is the conjugate base, C2H3O2 negative. Keep this over here. All right. So how much does it go forward? Well, we figured out the Ka to be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5. That's small. That's tiny. And that means that this barely goes forward. So we're going to have to do an equilibrium problem. Again, if this was a strong acid, I would take the concentration that I just solved for, which is 0.025 molar over 0.025, which is 0.1, and I would do the negative log of that. I, could, I was able to do that with a strong acid. I cannot do that with a weak acid because it doesn't all dissociate. This gives me the information I need to show how much it does. So we have our ice table if you need it. So initially, I know the concentration to be uh, 0.102 molar. We'll make this uh, zero. Okay, I mean, the conjugate base is also there, but I'm caring about this. This is going to be minus some x. This is plus x. And of course, this will be zero. I have to put plus x here. I need both of them there because they're part of the equilibrium expression. And then, of course, at equilibrium, I got 0.102 minus x. I've got x. This should be looking familiar. x. And let's plug this in to our equilibrium formula. So Ka, which is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5, is going to equal what? Well, the concentration of the H3O, which is x, times the concentration of conjugate base, which is x also, all over, hey, freeze you. Well, 0.102. You may say, well, where's the x? Well, I'm approximating away this x because, because the Ka is so small, we barely go forward. This is a huge number compared to that x. So I can approximate it away to get rid of, get, make sure we stay out of the quadratic type of formula. And for those that don't understand what I just did here, the Ka is equal to the products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, and the solids and liquids don't apply. This is a liquid. So I put H3O plus times the conjugate base, that's what this is, over the reactant. This is aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. This is a liquid that doesn't go. And so, of course, what we get is we get x squared equals 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5 times 1.02, or point, I should hit 102. And because it's a square uh, squared, I'm going to square root both sides, and let's solve for x. So I get my concentration of x. Again, don't lose sight of what you're trying to solve for. We're trying to find this concentration because I want a pH is equal to uh, 0.001428. And what is that equal to? The concentration of my what? conjugate base, but it's also equal to my hydronium ion. So to find the pH, guess what? I do negative log of that. So do negative log. Uh, second answer. Negative log. And what I get is a pH of 2.84. 2.84. Eight, five, and I round. That is equal to my pH, my initial pH. Okay, and that's a lot like what we saw here. So let's take a quick look here. Does it verify that? Now, if you look at your table, you should be able to verify that. And since this is one, two, you can see that. Wow, that my value of two point uh, 8.5, which is almost 2.9, is pretty verified. 
I would say 2.85 pH is pretty verified there. And if I remember when we started the lab, your initial pHs were about that. In fact, you can check that better than what I'm doing. You can go to your graph that I have posted and see exactly what the data says at that point. You can get that because you have the data table to the left in LogaPro. So that's how we did that. So we've got, we've got what? We have the initial pH, okay, which is 2.85. I've got the concentration of my acid. I've got the Ka of my acid. I've marked up my graph to know where the equivalence point is, max buffering. Okay, I have two more things left. And let's take care of them. So let's do this one. Let's figure out a point between the max buffer and the equivalence point. So I'm going to figure out this point right here. Can we see what that is? So this for me is 43 milliliters. All right. 43 milliliters. So at 43 milliliters, I've got a pH that looks somewhere like Again, I can go off the, the direct graph, but I'm just making estimates here. You can use it. Looks like 5.3. Let's just say that I've got a pH of 5.3. And I want to be able to verify that at 43, at 43 milliliters of base added. So how do I handle that? Well, I handle that by figuring out at 43 milliliters how many moles of base did I add. So what I'm going to do Let's just white this out to make it clear so I can do some work here. Sorry if, I'm, sorry if you can't do that. All right, so I'm going to just white this out. And then I'm going to go to here. So 43 milliliters, I'm going to convert to liters. All right, so I'm dividing by 1,000 milliliters. And once I have liters, I want to get rid of liters. And like I did above, I knew it was point. Uh, 05 moles per liter. That was the molarity. And that's going to give me moles of my hydroxide. So let's go find that. I mean, so why do I care about that? Because this is a, basically a stoichiometric part of the um, problem here. 43 divided by 1,000. Remember, the strong base is going to uh, what? Drive the reaction to the right. So what I get is 0 0.00215. So this gives me 0 0.00215. Okay, let's write that a little neater. Okay, and I'll make that different color because I can. So the answer is 0 0.00215. Zero zero and what's that for? That's for the hydroxide. All right. Now, how many moles of H pluses are in my beaker? Well, we know that already, don't we? There are 0 .00 0 0.00255 moles of H pluses. We got that from the equivalence point. That's exactly how much moles of H hydroxides we had to add to make them equal. So that's exactly how many moles of H pluses are already in my beaker. So the H pluses, or protons, are 0 0.00, and my short-term memory is going, 0 0.00255. And if you look at that, we didn't add enough what? Base to totally neutralize. It makes sense why the pH is less than the equivalence and greater. We've got more what? H pluses than we do base. Obviously, because we're not at the equivalence point. So we're going to do some stoichiometry here, right? We were adding what? We were adding hydroxide, and we were adding what? Um, let's do this. We're adding hydroxide, and we're adding H pluses. So this is a good time for a stoich table, right? We added protons, and we added, and now the proton is, you can say it's the acetic acid. I'm just going to make it H plus here. And we had OH minuses, okay? Obviously, that makes water. But it's a stoic table. We started out with what? Get the red. We had H pluses was 0 0.00255. And the hydroxide's 0 0.00215. Well, who's the limiting reagent? 
obviously the hydroxide. So we're minus 0 0.00215, and we're minus 0 0.00215. We're plus, of course, but we don't need to know that. 0 0.00215 over there. And what do you get, lo and behold? You're going to get this going to 0, and you subtract these two numbers, and that tells you how much what's left. It tells you how much H plus is left. We drove off most of the protons, but there's some that are still outnumbering the hydroxides. So, my friends in chemistry, 0 0.00255 minus 0 0.00215, and what I get is the number left over, and I'll just wipe the rest of this out, why not? What I get is 0 0.00 zero zero four and that's moles of H pluses that are still in the container all right so we have the H plus now the H plus is really the acetic acid I, I know I made it H plus here but it's really acetic acid and so we have the acid part and let's uh, white out some more of this okay to make some of this make sense so let's continue on this problem and let's wipe this out now I really should have and I'm looking back at this I said well I left this alone but what did we make if this is the conjugate acid alright let me just put this here let's go backwards a little bit so let's make this the C2 the uh, H of oh, Christmas uh, let's make this what the acid was, which was what? H C two H three O two. And then of course what's it going to make? It's going to make the conjugate base, which is C two H three O two negative. So we minus point zero zero two one five and we plussed 0 0.00215, yes. So what we did is we made some conjugate base, and we took away all of the strong base that annihilated itself and stopped the reaction, and now we have what? Now we have the remaining conjugate acid. That's what this is. This is the conjugate acid. This is how much conjugate. I know I have H plus there, but it represented the acid. So I've got conjugate base and conjugate acid. Now, I could do an equilibrium problem here and say, hey, okay, minus X, plus X, convert these to molarities and, and be on my merry way to get the pH, right? Find, solve for the X like we did over here. And once we solve for the X using the Ka, guess what we could do? We could... Um, get the pH, but there's a better way and I want you to use it when you can. Use the henderson hasselbloch If I'm in this area and I want to find the pH of something, use the ratio of how much. So pH equals the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the what? Of the um, conjugate base over the conjugate acid. All right, so what we're going to do here is I get rid of this stuff, get out of my way. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to put the pKa in. The pKa we know is, uh, we did this somewhere somewhere before. pKa is 4.7. We got that from the graph. Log of the concentration. Now, careful, uh, we had molarities here, so I'm going to convert these to concentrations. So that's pretty simple. Uh, for the base, it's going to be 0 0.00215 over, guess what, the total volume. So at 43 milliliters, I had 43 milliliters of base, didn't I? So that's 0 0.043, but we also had what, 25 milliliters, okay, in my beaker. So these are liters. I just converted them to liters. So that's, my, that's, that's the concentration of my base over the concentration of my acid. 
which is left is point zero 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 four over the same number point zero four three plus point zero two five don't forget to add the volumes now let's go solve for that okay so when I solve for this log of these two concentrations and I look it's going to be positive because this number is bigger right this number is going to be bigger in fact I get the concentration of this right here to be 0 0.0316 and the concentration of my acid was 0 0.005 okay so there's a heck of a lot more what conjugate base than what conjugate acid so clearly my pH which is well the log of what the log of this number is 0 0.00215 over or I'm sorry it's a lot more conjugate base than conjugate acid so this number is going to be positive so we're going to wind up adding something to the pKa which makes sense guys if there's more base the pH is going to be higher than the than the what max buffering position aka pKa okay so in any case I, I I do all this math here and my pH equals 5.4 if you want. And that is the pH that I should get at 43 milliliters. What did I get? Well, I got something like 5.3, I think. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I'm fudging it, but it looks like I'm about 5.3, so I'm verifying. I would say that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we verified that position. So number four, if you want, is the verification of a spot at be, between the what? Um, max buffering to the um, equilibrium or equivalence point. So at 43 milliliters, I verified it to be 5.3 equals the pH, which makes a lot of sense to my graph. Okay, uh, there are two more things I have to do. I want to verify the pH at equivalence. So number five. All right, so how do we do go about doing that? How do I go about verifying this pH at equivalence? Why is it going to be above 7? Do I have the space? Probably not, but we're going to try. Well, how do I do that? Well, to verify the pH at this value here, in fact, I'm going to find that pH. All right. I'm going to start with the moles and the molarities I needed. So the thing is, I want to find the pH at equivalence. Now, at equivalence, we know that the what? We know that the protons equal the hydroxides. That's where we drove the acid until we ran out of acid. This is the exact amount of base needed. And we knew that to be, as we said before, around 51. I know I said about 51 milliliters. So 51 milliliters got me 0 0.22055 moles of H pluses. Okay? Now, there is no more. That's exactly how many uh, base I had to add. So there's no more H pluses and there are no more hydroxides from the base at this point so all we got is water so you would say okay the pH should be 7 however think with me for a second let's look at the reaction again uh, where do I have it? I have it somewhere oh, there it is look at the reaction I drove this at this point I have 0% conjugate acid and I have a hundred percent conjugate base and you have zero percent hydroxide right you used you used it used it all up to annihilate each other you added just enough hydroxide to make both these the limiting reagent so they're both gone but what do you have you have a hundred percent of the conjugate base and it's because it's a weak acid it's a relatively strong conjugate base so this 0 0.20025 moles of H pluses or I should say really moles of acetic acid became 0 0.00255 moles of what? My conjugate base. Right? That's what I got here. I got 0% acid, 100% conjugate base. But guess what? The conjugate base is going to react. Okay? It's going to react now with, with what? Well, what is there plenty of in an aqueous solution? you guessed it, water. So this is going to react with water. 
And because it's a decent conjugate base, decently strong, because the acid is weak, the Ka is low, the Kb is high, this is going to pull an H away from the water. It's going to ionize water. And this is going to make, reform the acid, H2, not H2, H, C2, H3, O2, plus a hydroxide. And there's the key. We created some hydroxides by ionizing water because this is a relatively strong base. It's not a strong base, but stronger than the dissociation of the acid. So how much of this do we have? How much of this is produced? Well, my friends, it depends on the Kb. Yes. So we're going to have to do an equilibrium problem here. Okay, we know that we have a certain number of moles, but we're going to do an equilibrium problem, so we need to know what the concentration is. So this is moles over the total volume. The total volume at the time is what? 0 0.025. That's how many liters were in the beaker. And this is 51 milliliters of base, so you have to add them together. And that gives me the concentration. So when I do the math, I have a concentration of 0 0.0336, we'll call it. And that's the molarity of my initial concentration of my what? Conjugate base at equilibrium. I have 0 acid, and I have 0 of this. And the change is what? Well, minus x plus x plus x, and of course at equilibrium will be 0 0.0336 minus x and x plus 0 is x and x. So we know that we can approximate away this x for reasons we've been talking about for days. So we know that Kb is equal to x squared over 0 0.0336. Now, how do I find Kb? Well, if Ka is 2.05, I know Ka times Kb equals Kw. So, very simply, 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5, all right, is my Ka. And uh, to get my K, oops, I'll do it this way. So I rearrange this equation. I want to solve for Kb, so Kb is equal to the Kw, which is 10 to the negative 14, over what? My Ka, which is 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5. And let's solve for that. Okay, so I get my Kb to be 5.0 times 10 to the negative 10, Okay, and that is an important value because now I have the Kb for this equilibrium, and I know it equals x squared over 0 0.0336. So let's do that. So we have 5.0 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, times, of course, because I'm solving for x squared, 0.0336. 0336. Remember, we, we approximated away that x, and that equals x squared. Okay, and of course, what we'll do is square root both sides to solve for x. Let's do that. Okay, so after all this is said and done, x is equal to 4.09. Uh, let's take, say, 9, keep some numbers here, uh, times 10 to the negative 6, which is equal to what? That's actually the hydroxide concentration, right? We solve for x. Here is our x, hydroxide. So it's a hydroxide concentration. Well, we want pH. Now, there's a couple of different ways to solve for that, and you could divide by um, the Kb here, but I'm just, I'm, I have a big love to do this. I'll take the POH, which is the negative log. So negative log of that. Second. 
Okay, and what I get is my pOH to be, so yeah, that's my negative log in this process. And I get my pOH to be 5.39. I want the pH, and what do I know? I know the pOH plus the pH equals 14. So subtract that from 14. Or take, and what you get is 8.6. So the pH at the equivalence point, not the pOH, the pH, I subtract 14 minus 5.39, the pH will be 8.61. So the pH at equivalence is, let's get some stuff out of the way. I know it's kind of getting crowded around here. But the pH at equivalence, which is what I'm looking for in this case, will be 8.6. Probably two significant figures that we'll carry here. And let's go look at my graph to see if that makes any sense. So I'm thinking, you know, eyeballing it. I'm like around here somewhere. If this is 9, 8.6 would be is 8.5. So 8.6 is in this area here. And I'm not that far away if you think about drawing a straight line, which I really can't do on this. So um, it's certainly a plausible that I got a good number. Okay, But obviously, I'm way above 7. That's important. At equivalence, okay, at the stoichiometric endpoint, I'm way above 7. And the reason I have 8.6 and not 7 is because of all of this conjugate base, okay, with a very small KB, but still is going to ionize water a bit, okay? And that extra hydroxides is what drives the pH up. All right, now, last but not least, okay, is number six, or at least, I don't know how, what kind of order you're going to use, but I want to, uh, I want to basically take my final pH and verify that. So at, all right, I'm going to have to raise some things here, but at my 70, so at 70 milliliters, all right, what's my pH? Gosh, I don't have any room anywhere. So at 70 milliliters, what's my pH? All right, well, um, how am I going to attack this? Well, at 70 milliliters of base added, um, anytime I'm above the equivalence point, the pH is nothing more than the amount of hydroxide added beyond this point. So if I know the equivalence point, in my case, is 51, I'm going to take 70 minus 51, and of course, that's 19 milliliters. I added 19 milliliters of extra hydroxide beyond the equivalence point. And the pH is going to be, okay, just that. So how many moles of hydroxide are in 19 milliliters? So if I get myself a little whiteout area here, so we can see what's going on, and make it small here. Let's go with the blue. And I've got 19, all right. And of course, that's going to be 0 0.019 liters. And I know that for every one liter, it was 0 0.05 moles. That was the molarity. So this is going to give me the amount of moles. Okay, and then I'm going to divide that by the total volume. So we had 70 milliliters added, but if you remember, we had a beaker that had 25 milliliters in the titration. So 75, 70 plus 25 is 95, so we have 0 0.095 liters. So I'm going to take this moles and divide by 0 0.095 liters, and that is going to be my molarity of my hydroxide ions in that solution, which is the concentration of my hydroxide, right? To get the pH of something past the equivalence point, it's just how many hydroxides beyond this point in the water. So this is my hydroxide concentration. And you can see where I'm headed with that. Do what? A pOH, subtract from 14. So let's go find that. So 0 0.019 times 0 0.05 divide by 0 0.095. 
I get 0.01, okay, molarity. And I'm going to do the negative log of that if you would like. Okay, if you don't trust yourself, negative log. Trust me, I guess, at this point. I'm so tired from doing this. But I'll continue on. Second answer. So obviously, I get 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Obviously, the, the negative log of that is 2. So my POH is 2. Right? POH is 2. Subtract from 14. And this should give me a pH of 12. And let's see, 11. This is 12. And my number is approaching 12. Not perfect. Remember, I'm guessing these equivalence points, but you can see that. And, you know, why does this steadily climb up? Because as we add more and more base over time, we're approaching what the concentration of the base in the burette is. So we're trying to approach that. We're never going to get there because we have some what? Some diluted um, compounds in there. But over time, we'll approach the value of what that is. In fact, what is the, con what is the pH of a 0.05 molar strong base? Well, that's the concentration of the what? That's the concentration of the hydroxide. So, so 0 0.05, let's do negative log of that just to find the pOH. Negative log of 0 0.05. And what you get is that pOH is that minus 14. And the concentration of the base in the burette is 12.6. So this is gonna this is going to try to get to 0.6 but never quite get there. The concentration can never achieve 12.6 or 12.7 molar because of all the other diluted water we have in there. But over time it'll approach it and that's why it's slowly heading up. Okay, so I hope you got something out of all of this. A lot going on. I know it's crazy but those are the things that I wanted. I wanted the final pH verified, pH of 12, which is close to what my graph says. I wanted the pH of the equivalence point I wanted a point below the equivalence, but higher than the uh, max buffer position and validate that point. I wanted the concentration of the acid. I wanted the initial pH of the acid and the Ka of the acid. Those are the things that we accomplished with the weak acid strong base titration. Hope you enjoyed.